Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Tim and welcome to today's video. If you're here, you probably got yourself a brand new Priority Apollo gravel bike. One thing you might have noticed or seen in my review video last time is that this bicycle is tubeless compatible. So, you might be asking yourself a few things. One, is setting this bike up tubeless easy? Is it difficult? Is it something that I or you can do? Um, I being me, but you, I being you if you're watching this video. <laughs> I'm gonna show you how to set the Apollo up tubeless and you'll get to see firsthand if it's worth it for you to give it a shot. So, let's get into it. So before you start this journey, you wanna make sure to have all of your tools and materials needed in order to set yourself up for success. So, first things first, you need some rim tape and this is Stan's rim tape. The internal width of this rim um, is 20 millimeters so usually you want three to five millimeters wider than the internal width of your rim. So you need some tire levers, some tire sealant, a syringe makes your life a lot easier it's a less messy procedure if you have that. You need some tubeless valves which um, I'll link in the description below and you'll need a wrench that a 15 millimeter wrench you can use like a crescent wrench or in this case I have like this pedal wrench thing that just so happens to be 15 millimeters right there. Once you have all that stuff, then you can kind of continue on. Let's just jump into doing this. So we're gonna take off the front tire, take off the rear tire, and I'll get as, as in here as I can to show you how to take this tire off or this wheel off properly. All right, so what I'm doing now is just getting these tires, man, these are on the bead. Oh man, okay, I gotta get it to come off the bead there. And you wanna get it completely off the bead before you start putting in your tire levers here because it'll just make your make your life a little bit easier. All right, so because this bead is really tight on this rim, which is a great thing, what I'm doing is I have one tire lever just kinda like set up like that so that it's holding the um, tire out. But just be patient, you know. This stuff is never easy to do. It's everything's always harder than you expect with bike tinkering in the tinkering world. All right, once you get that, you kind of get like this little opportunity to take everything off. Then everything just comes off real easy. Unscrew the valve, take it off. Cool, so there's the tire, or the tube inside of it. Toss that to the side. What you're going to do is take off this rim tape very first and foremost. I also forgot to mention, it's a good idea to get some kind of like alcohol. This is like isopropyl alcohol, but what you wanna do is clean the inside of the rim with alcohol, because that'll help make the tape stick um, the best way possible. All right, anyway, I'm gonna spray off these rims. Really clean in here too, don't, um, don't skimp, don't take shortcuts, really take your time with this process because if you do it right, then you won't have as much of a problem getting this rim tape to stay. All right, get your starter tab there. What you're gonna do is find a hole where your valve goes in at, and you're gonna start the tape about, I don't know, maybe one, two, three, four spokes, or sp little holes up here up there. So you're going to lay the tape down and what you're looking for with the rim tape is that it covers the whole inside and comes up over the bead a little bit. So up on the walls a little. So this rim tape might be just a little bit too thin in, in width but I think it's going to work. So what you do is you just want to pull as tight as you can. Get that laid down and just really just pull and really get this tape to lay down. In this. So once you get back to where you started, you want to go a little bit past it. Um, so you just cut the tape. Jam. Make sure it's laying on the, the rim itself, the tape. Really, really take your time with this part. You're going to hear the tape kind of, might get some sore fingers after. You can take a cloth here just to kind of Help out, help with the finger fatigue a little bit. So then what you do is you take your, your um, tubeless valve here and take 
something really, really, you can use a pen. I mean, I wouldn't recommend using a pen, something even thinner than a pen. But just, I'm just trying to use household stuff here. Anyway, you find the hole, which is right here. And then you just poke, start a hole. We'll start our hole. Then you take your valve, push that through. Sealed really well in there. And then you just push the valve in there with your thumb. Take the little screw here, or the nut, rather, thingy. Okay, once you have that, then you come back. Make sure that's finger tight. You don't want to use a tool to tighten that stem down because, or the valve down, because you could cause some damage. Then you come back, grab your wheel here, make sure that for the rotation going the right way of the tire. Once you have that, then you just put the tire back on. Okay, then you take your tire lever, come in here, and then work on getting this over the rim. One side. And take the other side. Cool. Now that's on there. I'm gonna try something. I'm just gonna try it with a floor pump to get this to sit on the bead. So once you have it here, now you just inflate the tire to get it to sit on the bead, and then we'll come back and put the sealant in. This is where an air compressor comes in handy because it just blasts air in there. Or if, again, if you have like a floor pump and you have a canister that you can fill up, then that works too. But sometimes you can get it to go with just a floor pump which is what I'll try right now. So, another thing that's really helpful at this point is to have a valve core remover, which will typically come with a tubeless um, valve if you buy it. So just pay attention to, to one of these tools. If it doesn't come with it, make sure to buy one. You take this valve core, unscrew it to take it out because you'll need to do this with the syringe anyway to put in the sealant, but you take the core out, which looks like that, you can't see it. And then, we're gonna uh, take our floor pump and just try to get it to seat. So put this on, and I'm just gonna go into it. But, holy cow, it's down my leg. It's gonna work. All right, so what you're looking for here is you're gonna hear the bead sit and it's gonna make a loud popping noise. And I can tell it's gonna work because it's holding air right now, which is wild, I don't even need the compressor. But, listen for this bead pop. That usually happens right around 50 to 60, or right there. Woo! All right. And what that pop is, it's your bead being seated on the rim. What we're looking for now is, if you go around all the rim, that little line right there, right here, you wanna make sure that's even on both sides when you go around the entire rim. And if that looks even, that looks great. I can't believe that worked with a floor pump. That's amazing for you because that means you don't need a freaking compressor. So now we still have our valve core out right there. We're gonna put that to the side. So now this is where we grab our tire sealant and your syringe. So what you're gonna do is fill this up. I've always done with gravel tires, two of these. So that's, I guess that's 60, whatever. And that might be too much, might be too little. I don't know, but it's always worked out for me. Um, but then what you do is you take this little syringe, put it over the valve. Now there's other ways to do this. Like you can, once you have the bead seated, you can take the tire off a little bit on one side and then fill it up. You know, that's a fine way to do it too if you don't have a syringe and it'll work just as good. But Every time I do that, I always make a mess. And I just prefer having a syringe. Great, that's it. Once you have the sealant in there, you can put your valve core, valve core back in and tighten it down. And then take the tire and the rim and the sealant that's inside and just kind of go around the whole tire just like so and make sure that that sealant goes all the way around and gets all the way in there. Now what we're gonna do, just pump it up to just say 40 PSI for now and uh, make sure that everything is it's still yeah, holding air. That's 40 PSI. And that, that's pretty hard. So yeah, once you got the air in there, just do your part. Make sure to go around the whole tire and rim. Get that 
tubeless. And that is how you set your tire up tubeless. Now you'll probably hear the sealant kind of sloshing around in there, but that's a good thing, so that's what you want. Front tire done. Let's move on to the back. So what we're gonna do is take off the rear wheel here, and before you do that, you wanna come over to the drive drivetrain side and take this little nut out. What this is what this is is basically a shifter cable, and you're taking that out so that you can then take the wheel out. This little lever right here. If you pull up on it, it will bring the gear forward and give you a little bit of cable slack right there. And then what you're gonna do is just pull that out. I can do this one-handed. There's no way I'm gonna do that one-handed. What you're gonna do, I have a pair of needle nose pliers here, but you're just gonna, again, lift up on this little tab here. Give yourself some proper cable slack. Yeah, you just kind of turn it and then pull up. And there you go, ouch. Um, that's spring loaded, so just be very, very careful that you're not, you don't know, like let your finger go and cause yourself a problem. Once you do that, leave these chain tensioners or this belt tensioner alone on the horizontal drops here. Just come to your 15 mil guy, just loosen it up. Same thing on the other side. Crack that nut. Holy cow, and then it just comes falling down. Don't make the mistake that I just made. Make sure that you're holding the tire when you come over because it just comes straight down. And this belt will release too. So, <laughs> whoo, that was, um, that was wild. Um, also, there's this little cable holder right here. I don't know what to call that. I cut myself, but we're all good. If you're not getting bloody knuckles, then you're doing it wrong. But anyway, here's a little cable holder right here. So again, just make sure you're holding the tire when you're, when you're loosening everything because that just comes straight out real fast. We're gonna do the same procedure. Now we're just filling it up with some sealant. Boom. We've successfully set the tires up tubeless. Whew, that was a little bit of a pain, I'm not gonna lie. No, it wasn't that bad actually, it went really smooth. The fact that I didn't have to use an air compressor is um, speaks to how well these tires and rims kind of go together. Um, so if you're wondering what that's like, there you have it. Let's get the rear, let's get the tire back on on the back and then we'll talk about the benefits of tubeless. So getting it on is easy as long as you don't mess with the horizontal dropouts of the... And one thing to call out are these bolts or whatever you call them. You got a green one over here. I'm not sure why one is green and one is blue, but on the bottom of it, you wanna make sure to line up that like lock nut <laughs> with where the dropout is because that prevents, I don't know, that's there for a reason. So make sure that you line that up just like that. And you wanna make sure to do that on both sides to ensure that it's installed correctly and everything is safe and as it should. Pull this little lever here. Make sure it's really spring loaded, so be careful because you don't want it to like fling and hit your finger. But pull that back up and then put this back into place. And in doing that, I certainly frayed this cable. One thing you do want to check though is once you do have it back into place, is you want to go all the way to the top gear there and then click five down, click down five times. And then make, you want to make sure that these two yellow lines line up. And if they aren't, then you come up here to this barrel adjuster on the um, right side shifter. And then you turn it inside and clockwise until they start lining up, which they are 
right now. And once you do that, again, go through the gears a little bit, go all the way to the top gear here, click in five, one, two, three, four, five, and again, you want that yellow line to be lined up with that yellow line. So that completes setting up the Priority Apollo uh, tubeless. Now, you can take what you want from this video and decide whether or not you want to tackle this. I will tell you this, setting tires up tubeless is never easy. It's never easy. Sometimes it's easy. But just like everything with bike tinkering, nothing is ever easy. So if you're gonna take it on, make sure you have all the tools lined up before time, beforehand and just be patient. Um, refer to this video as much as you want. If, you have, if you're stuck and, you have, and you're having trouble figuring it out, drop a comment below. I'll do my best to answer things as they come up. Uh, you can follow me also on Instagram at Tim all day. There it is. I'd say the benefits of having tubeless are you're able to run a really low PSI, um, anywhere between 20 and 30. And you might want to consider taking this time to upgrade the tires to like 47 C tires. I wish I would have done that. Um, then this would have been a great off-road supple ride. So, um, again, another benefit is if you do puncture your tire, then it's tubeless and the sealant inside should do its best to kind of keep things sealed up. The benefits of having tubeless outweigh the cons, in my opinion, based on how I'm going to ride this bike off-road. So, if you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. Um, if I miss anything, drop a comment below and I'll answer answer your questions or comments or concerns. Um, until then, keep riding and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.